It was a nightmare for Mike and April McDuff. The doctor told me that, you know, nothing else they could do about it. Mike, a healthy grandfather in 2012, was diagnosed with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. It's fast moving and incurable. Just one year later, Mike had a feeding tube and couldn't lift his hands. I had his five children come to the house basically to celebrate Mike's life and say goodbye to him. And I never dreamed that really at this point in time, a year later, that he'd even be still alive. Alive and improving every day thanks to this, a component of soybeans called Lunacin. I'm Dr. Rick Bedlack, Associate Professor of Neurology here at Duke University. In my 15 years as Director of the Duke ALS Clinic, I've seen more than 2,000 patients and families with this disease. It's never an easy thing to watch. It's hard to watch someone that you love um, have such a big barrier in their life to not be able to do all the things that they want to do. And I think um, a big part of that is, you know, Chris is a really awesome daddy. And um, not being able to hug your children and play with them, um, ride scooters with them, um, all those things that, you know, you take, it, take for granted um, each day, you know, he doesn't have that luxury. Unfortunately, in spite of a hundred years of effort, scientists have not found a way to significantly slow, stop, or reverse this disease. It's therefore not surprising that patients with ALS often turn to the internet to seek out alternative treatments. Patients and families want to believe that there's something better out there. A Google search for ALS treatment reveals more than 100 million hits. Things like acupuncture, bee venom, cannabis, coconut oil, vitamins, supplements, and even fecal transplants. Many of these are alternative treatments that are claimed to be clinically proven and perfectly safe. How can we as clinicians and scientists help patients and families separate good internet information from bad and make more informed decisions about alternative therapies? In 2009, I started a program called ALS Untangled to do just that. ALS Untangled is a program that scientifically reviews alternative treatments for ALS. Patients and families submit the names of alternative therapies they are considering and then vote for the ones they most want to hear about. Our large international team grades each therapy on the plausibility of its mechanism, the strength of its preclinical and clinical data, and its risks and costs. Our goal is to empower patients to make more informed decisions about their ALS care. So what about Mike McDuff, the patient from the clip? After a lengthy review, our team concluded that Mike really does have a form of ALS and is getting better. Also, that Lunison has a plausible mechanism and appears reasonably safe. We published our findings and are now planning a small pilot trial in 50 more patients. It's important for us as clinicians and scientists to listen to our patients and to keep an open mind. The cure for ALS is out there somewhere. I believe the fastest way to find it is through responsive, optimistic, and respectful collaboration. I believe the truth is out there. It's not always easy to find. I believe the answer is out there but sometimes it's not easy to find. I believe the truth is out there, but it isn't always easy to find. I believe the truth is out there, but it isn't always easy to find. The truth is out there, but it isn't always easy to find.